my top five best Tom Ford fragrances. These are fragrances that have really earned their place in my heart. They're the reason that I love and adore Tom Ford. Okay, so the first fragrance on the list is Solar Niche. I personally love this fragrance. I know that this is my top five list and I, I love them all. But this one, this is my Christmas fragrance. It really gives me that snowy, beautiful Christmas vibe, despite the fact that I live in Australia and we don't have snow here at Christmas ever. We have 40, 45, 50 degree days at Christmas. But for whatever reason, this fragrance reminds me of Christmas. So I've sprayed some on the test strip here and it's this beautiful, sparkly, powdery citrus scent. It's also quite unique smelling. I've never smelled anything like this fragrance or close to this fragrance with any other fragrance I've ever tried. This fragrance reminds me of soft snow and lemon sorbet. It is so delicious and cold smelling, fresh and citric. I love it. This fragrance also smells very clean. So if you like clean smelling fragrances, which I actually don't, I'm not a clean fragrance lover, but this one is definitely one you should check out. It also smells extremely expensive, which let's be real, it is, <laughs> it is very expensive, but it smells, I think, even more expensive than what it actually costs, believe it or not. So the next fragrance on the top five best list is Lost Cherry. Now, unfortunately, I have recently run out of Lost Cherry and haven't had a chance to get to the store to buy it again. But OMG, it is an amazing gourmand fragrance. It has notes in it such as bitter almond, liqueur, sour cherry, vanilla. It's nutty, it's creamy, it's sweet. It really is rich, ripe, syrupy cherries with this nutty, creamy almond vibe and that smooth, velvety vanilla. It really does remind me of a really fancy cocktail. You know, one of those really extravagant, super expensive, that smell amazing. That's what Lost Cherry reminds me of. And on the final dry down of Lost Cherry, it dries down to this slightly powdery, creamy vanilla, slightly nutty scent. It is a really spectacular fragrance. Lost Cherry does not have the, the greatest projection and longevity. I mean, I think a lot of people know that and it is very true. The reason that I purchase it is because of the scent itself. It is one of those unforgettable, beautiful scents. And what I like to do is when I purchase it, I layer it with my Kayali Vanilla 28 and the combination, talk about a couple made in heaven. <laughs> These two fragrances were meant to be. It is a unique fragrance mixture. You don't smell like anybody else and you smell incredibly gorgeous, edible, and yummy. The next fragrance on the list is Solar Blanc. This one here is an e, the EDT version. There is an EDP. Basically between the both, this one I find fresher and the other one I find creamier and more dense. But I actually prefer the EDT considering I use it as a summer fragrance. This fragrance has pistachio, coconut, pink pepper, cardamom, coconut, amber, and tonka bean. Wow, that sounds incredible. What I really like, I've sprayed some on a test strip here. What I really like about this fragrance, as it, despite the fact that it is a coconut tropical scent, it's so fresh and inviting. I think it's really that bergamot in it that gives it that really fresh kick and stops it becoming that too heavy, too typical suntan lotion-y tropical fragrance. Now, don't get me wrong, this does smell like very tropical and like a very high-end luxury sunscreen, but it does it incredibly well. It isn't just any sunscreen. It is the most expensive, most prestigious, luxury high-end sunscreen. It really does make you feel special and opulent. This fragrance has the advantage too of being such a perfect summer fragrance because it's not too sweet. It's not too tropical and heavy and creamy. It's not cloying. It's just light, fresh, and really, really easy to wear. This fragrance here is the epitome of a summer fragrance. 
So the next fragrance on the list, or should I say fragrances? So I didn't want to do these guys as separate because they are so similar, but we have Noir Extreme and then we have Noir Pour Femme. So this is supposed to be the female version and this is supposed to be the male version. Now in saying that, I wear both of these and I rock them. I've got absolutely no problems whatsoever wearing this one. If you want my complete honest opinion, I actually prefer the male one over the female one. But in saying that, they're both absolutely beautiful. These fragrances both smell like a really elevated, nutty, creamy ice cream. They're both decadent and creamy. And I believe, despite the fact they're marketed as male and female, I believe that both of these could be classified as unisex. I would love to smell this on a man or a woman, and I would love to smell this on a woman or a man. So don't be afraid by, you know, what they're marketed as. Spray them, and if you like them, do you. Don't worry about what they are telling you you should like. I've got no problem wearing male fragrances. I will forever. I love them, and in some cases, they're better than some of my lady fragrances, lady fragrances, but... These ones here are very similar. Basically, you've got, this one is a little denser, a little thicker, a little heavier. This one here is slightly lighter, not a lot, but slightly lighter. Not quite as full on as this one, it's a little softer. But in saying that, they both have a very similar scent profile and they both have that beautiful coffee note in them that gives it that beautiful, sweet dessert vibe. What I love about these two fragrances is that they are gourmand leaning or gourmand fragrances, but they're not your typical gourmand fragrances. Again, there is none other in my collection and I'm a gourmand fragrance lover. I mean, that's the scent profile I will gravitate towards. There is none others like these two. They're all very different. I don't know if it's the coffee note, but it definitely elevates it and makes it different from anything I've experienced. These two fragrances are sexy, spicy, sweet, and definitely unforgettable. So the final fragrance on the list is Vanille Fatale. This fragrance has notes such as rum, coffee, saffron, lime, plum, rose, and tobacco. I mean, if that is not unique, I don't know what it is. This fragrance is definitely the most complex, deep vanilla fragrance I've personally ever experienced. This fragrance is also the most vanilla Ford grown up vanilla fragrance I again have ever experienced. So I've sprayed some on the test strip here and every time I smell it, it is incredible. There's a smooth vanilla, it's mixed with some incense, fruity notes, and there's also some light booziness to it too. It really is quite unique. It's also very dense and deep. There's that beautiful unsmoked fresh tobacco note in there too. This fragrance smells like a spicy boozy vanilla cake with some fresh juicy wet tobacco leaves. Kind of I don't know, put through it or something. It's just, it's really mouth-watering. I'm salivating smelling it now. It smells amazing. So this is my go-to vanilla fragrance when I don't want that tropical, typical suntan lotion. This is the grown-up, classy vanilla fragrance that I would typically gravitate towards. Okay, Santa Freak, so that is the top five Tom Ford list, in my opinion. If you guys have any experiences or you own these fragrances or smelt them yourselves and you have any feedback at all, please post it in the comments below. I really do like hearing from you guys and your opinions. Don't forget to subscribe and hit notifications if you enjoy my content to get my videos first. And I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you guys. Thank you.